In our weekend spotlight is a centuries-old game that's enjoying new popularity with young people. It's chess. After the 2020 Netflix drama, The Queen's Gambit, the game saw its biggest boon in the United States since American Bobby Fischer won the 1972 World Chess Championship. Chess club memberships are soaring, and earlier this year, Chess.com's servers overloaded when it had the most active users ever. The renewed interest has created demand for other online content. Levy Rosman is one of those providing it. His YouTube channel, Gotham Chess, has the most subscribers of any YouTube chess channel. And his new book, How to Win at Chess, The Ultimate Guide for Beginners and Beyond, is out this fall. Levy, you are an international master. Yes. Is that right? What does that mean? International master is the second highest title you can have in the chess world, and I guess internationally, for lack of a better word. Uh, the title above mine is Grand Master, which is the title that everyone aspires to. Uh, I stopped at International Master because I frankly never even thought I would get it. So when I got it, it was a huge adrenaline dump for me and I was very happily going back to my university studies. How did you get involved in chess? Or how did you start playing chess and what was the appeal? Both sides of my family, moms and dads, are from the former Soviet Union. So it's ingrained there in the culture for sure. And there's a very funny story. My parents were trying to sign me up for after school classes when I was five. My mom said, chess. My dad said, art, he's too crazy for chess. And it turns out that my mom was actually right because I, I became completely obsessed with the game, but I ran from art class. I would hide in the playground tubes. I played my first tournament when I was seven and I just played ever since. What do you think accounts for the popularity in the United States now? We talked a little bit about, about the Queen's Gambit, mm -hmm. but it's still uh, becoming more and more popular. Yeah, so I would say, first of all, how much time do we have? But there, we've had uh, three big booms, right? But in 2020, Queen's Gambit happened. And right around that time, I had decided to make content full time. So that meant YouTube videos, some live streaming, but it wasn't a big deal until Queen's Gambit came. My view count on YouTube went from about 70,000 in a 48 hour window to a million. And that just kept happening because somebody would watch the Queen's Gambit trailer and on the sidebar it would say, how to play the Queen's Gambit by Gotham Chess. A video that I made with a little potato of a webcam, never thought much of, but it just blew up. Then in 2022, we had the cheating scandal, which you can make a story on, on its own about. And now it's skewed to the younger audience through short form content. So I'm talking about TikTok, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, bite-sized chess content. Now you can just scroll on your phone and you learn something about chess in 30 seconds. And then you go try it against a friend. So the entire culture and generation of chess has completely changed. I used to be embarrassed bringing chess trophies to school. I would get made fun of. That's not a thing anymore. On the airport coming here, a group of seventh graders recognize me and I've never seen kids that excited. Most people say it is among uh, the big boom is in middle school and high school. Yeah. Why that age group? Why do you think that is? Definitely recently, that, that has been the age group. But over the last few years, it's been people who learned it in childhood, didn't play it for 30, 40 years, and they're now playing it again, reconnecting with a, with a relative, with a father, grandfather, grandmother. I mean, it, it goes across generations. The young audience really enjoys it, I think, because First of all, they enjoy gaming, period. There's something different about chess. It's not just the one-on-one -on -one game where you mash a controller or learn some you know, little trick. There's never been a better time to learn the game, whether online or print. Uh, it used to be really hard to access this information. You could watch something for 60 seconds, go try it, and you're like, I'm the, I'm the smart one in the friend group now, at least until the next person learns something. You, you talk about playing online. I've seen people, or I know people, who if they're the two chess players in the same room and there's a board set mm -hmm. up, They'd rather play on their phone against each other than sit down and, and play the game. Why, why do you think that is? Well, I suppose it's also just a microcosm of general society, if you will. I, I mean, we're just a bit too comfortable on our phones nowadays. I, I gotta tell you, I, I enjoy playing speed games way more on my phone than I do live at, at parties or in tournaments. It's like three minute games, one minute games. I'm a monster on my phone. Put me in front of a person, there's psychology, there's nerves, you, you don't see the squares the same way you do. I mean, the last three years, you, you likely got into chess online. You didn't get into chess at your local club. So people are having a little bit of a tough time moving that skill to IRL, but it's still very popular. A lot of chess clubs at pubs, libraries, schools. So we'll get there.
IRL, in yes, real life. Yes, in real life. <laughs> Apologies, <laughs> my uh, creator terminology. I have to mash everything into acronyms. A lot of pro athletes are, are talking about playing chess. Joe Burrow, the Cincinnati uh, Bengals quarterback who went mm -hmm. to the Super Bowl, keeps a chessboard by his locker. Uh, he says it helps him read defenses on the, on the football field. Are there other things that help if you learn to play chess that you can uh, take IRL in real life? I think it's mildly overblown, but yes, I would say more in one-on-one -on -one endeavors like boxing, because you have to prepare for the opposition. Your opponent has tendencies, positions they like to get to, whether they use the left or the right, southpaw, orthodox. But the same goes for football formations, I would imagine. I don't know a huge amount about football specifically, but basketball, how do you break down a defense? Uh, and a lot of athletes do like chess, and for good reason, because it, it does get your brain thinking in a much more, if this, then this, well, then I'll do this, but what if they do that kind of a way? But I would say the short answer is yes. There's a lot of overlap between athletics and, and kind of this forward thinking in chess. Your book is subtitled The Ultimate Guide for Beginners and Beyond. Mm -hmm. Who do you think would, would most benefit from the book? A beginner or someone who's sort of trying to move up to the next level? Over the last few years, I've been asked this question probably a thousand times, which is, do you have a chess book recommendation? Okay, there's all this YouTube, all this online. I just want a book. Give me a good book. There is no good one answer. There doesn't have to be one answer. There could be two or three. Uh, but I decided to write this book so you could read it 15 minutes before bed while laying on the couch, while relaxing. You don't need a physical board to guide you along. But the book guides you by the arm through all things chess. And I think it's a really refreshing read because a lot of chess books that were purchased by people like myself included are hard to finish. You need the board. You need hours of practice. They skip from one diagram to the second and six moves happened. And if you're not at that level, it's very difficult to read. So just like Chess has had a revolution in online and digital content, this was my idea with the book. I'm not dumbing down the subject. I think I'm just making it a bit more refreshing. Levy Rosman, thank you very much. Thank you.